everyone, I'm Joseph J. McAllister and today we're going to be shooting with colored light gels. So a colored light gel is basically a screen that you put over the light to change the color. And you don't need to run out and buy color gel screens to do color gel photography because any colored light will do. So outdoor floodlights, 60 watt bulbs, LED flashlights, seasonal Halloween lights, or any colored light bulb will do. So one problem with using color gels, 60 watt bulbs, or floodlights is that they heat up and over time the color gel fades. Now on the other hand, LEDs are really good because they don't heat up, they don't fade, and they provide the purest color spectrum. So the quickest solution for me today was to use two GE 60 watt bug lights for a rich yellow spectrum. And for a green spectrum, I'm using a Jemmy seasonal outdoor LED light. First, we're gonna need two yellow lights on either side of the subject. Then set up your green light at a 45 degree angle down the front. And also make sure that none of the lights are spilling back there on the backdrop because we don't wanna see that at all. Also, I found that it's good to have the lights a good ways away from the subject so that the mid-tones and highlights are not below out and you can pick up a good rich color. Now at night you can't use the recommended color settings so we're gonna have to go full manual. The camera spot metering is designed for flat lit scenes so at night it's gonna average all the darks and the lights and end up giving you the wrong settings. So I want the shadows blown out to drop off that information completely. And the subject is what I want to be properly exposed. And the proper exposure really is don't blow out the highlights and midtones. You want to see plenty of detail. To get the best resolution, we're going to want to keep our ISO settings as low as possible. Now, a good way to get these shadows to drop off completely is by brightening up your subject. And by comparison, the shadows will be pushed down. Now, the settings that I ended up using today was 400 ISO with 1 30th of a second at f3.5 with an 18 millimeter lens. The easiest way to see what kind of image that you're getting is to hook your camera's 4K HDMI output to a flat screen monitor. So I'm using a mini Type-C HDMI male to female VGA cable. And if you're running HDMI to VGA, you're going to need an active signal converter. Because HDMI is digital and VGA is actually an analog signal. So you need to buy a cable with an active converter box. So now that you have your color gel set up, you can use the color shift filters and controls in Lightroom to create all kinds of dramatic color spectrums. Like being a vintage prize fighter. Adrian! Or Bill Malloy, head of the Collinsport Cannery. Hello, Sheriff. This is Bill Malloy, head of the Collinsport Cannery. Yeah, I'm aware of what time it is. Listen, Sheriff, it seems our Miss Vicky Winters has gone missing. Well, I'm up here right now at Collinwood. I suggest you come up here and meet me. Yeah, we'll form a search party. Sheriff? Sheriff Patterson? The line's dead. Or how about a 40s noir film look? In a dark room, a man is waiting for an unwanted phone call. Hello? Midnight, Harbor Road, Pier 38. Okay, so now let's do a little photo editing. So I don't actually smoke, 
So let's go on to Google and find a cigarette smoke overlay. So we'll go into images, tools, size, and search for images up to 70 megapixels. And I'm gonna select 10 megapixel images. You wanna use the largest image that you can. And let's further modify our search by clicking white smoke and find one that is like the one that we're looking for. Then click view more. Now this is the image that we're going to be using. Looks good, but it really needs some smoke coming from that cigar. So let's drop in the smoke layer and use blend mode screen so we can see what we're doing. Now I like to go into transform and then use the warp mode to define the shape of the smoke. So let's just kind of stretch it out and make it look nice and about like that. So now let's go into hue and saturation and click colorize. And we're going to try to match the smoke to the room light. Now let's use the elliptical masking tool to make a circle around the smoke. Now invert the mask and go into refine. And I want to feather the mask as much as possible to create a vignette. And I'm going to duplicate this layer and turn that off. Now I'm just deleting some of the smoke to match the moodiness of the lighting. And let's turn the duplicate layer back on and just add a little bit of the smoke back into the image. That's good right there. Now let's create another elliptical mask. And we want to catch just the edges of the smoke here. And let's feather the mask again. Now back into hue and saturation. And now we're gonna try to match the green light. And there we go. Now we have some natural smoke that's interesting. And it looks like it's being illuminated by our studio lights. So thanks for watching and be sure to like, share, and subscribe. And if you like these photography tutorials, please support my channel through my Patreon page. And now I'll leave you with some photos that I took using this lighting setup. Little kitty, you're ruining the movie.